Hey y'all, it's Megan. So remember in a previous video, we were talking about the October beans. So they're ready to be picked. So I'm coming out here, I'm gonna pick some. I'm gonna show you what I do. And I also, um, a lot of people let them dry, store them that way, which is a wonderful way to store them. Um, I personally like to can them. That way I can just open the jar and they're done. They're already cooked. I just gotta warm them up, put a little seasoning in them and they're ready to go. Um, just a little faster in the long run. So I'm gonna show you what these um, look like and how to know if you're October beans, cranberry beans, tapazio beans, whatever you wanna call them, how you know they're ready to pick. All right, so I'm not sure what happened to this plant right here. I believe the bugs got a hold of it, but that's okay. I'm still gonna harvest the beans off of it. So this is how you know when your beans are ready to pick. They get this cool looking purple tie-dye. See there? That's from bugs. But they get this, uh, that is too. They get this purple tie-dye looking um, design on them. These right here are not ready. They're solid green still. May pick them. They're just not gonna be nearly as easy to shell. Look at this plant. Yeah, they all look pretty rough, especially those out there. That's, I was gonna tell you to go ahead and take them off. Yeah, unless it's not even. I know, but it looks like a bug got it because it ain't no leaves. I, I think they're dying. I think the leaves fell off. See, look at these. Well, I think they've uh, they've done their due. We're just gonna go ahead and pick them all because these plants do look so rough. So these are not gonna be as fun. These got them sting marks all over them. Maybe, I opened up one that looked like that and I didn't see no sting marks on the beans. So we'll pay attention to the beans on these with these sting marks on them. If there's marks on the beans inside like that, then those we'll throw those out. But if they're just on the outside, maybe it'll be okay. Yeah, these ain't got them. I seen one a while ago that looked like that, and I was like, oh, no. This one right here is perfect. Right there's the bug on it. On the dog. So right there's the bug that's apparently eating our plants, whatever the heck that little thing is. Right there is a perfect one. There ain't no steams or nothing on that one. That's what you want your beans to look like when you go to picking them. That's when they're perfect the for the picking. Time. You can let these dry, too. Yeah. Does it make it that long? Right there, still full, All right, so it's the next day, and we are shelling these um, October beans. We ended up getting about a five-gallon bucket full, and I have found to make them easier to shell. If you let them sit overnight and cool off and let them shells wilt just a tad, they're way, way easier to shell. And that goes for these October beans and crowner peas and anything else. I have found that that uh, is way easier to do. So we're going to get them all shelled out in here. We'll give the empty shells to the goat because he will very much love those. But we're sitting inside in the cool because it is super humid outside. The youngins are helping me. And it'll take us a little hey, bit, but then we'll get to the canning process. Why you put them? I hear you. Dude. Hey, Daddy. 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 I dropped one. I don't know where I went. Well, just, just leave it attached to it. It's all right. Can you get it? Yeah. Oh, Maggie, what are you doing? Making your own little pile? Uh-huh. Can you show them how to do it, Jacob? First, like, hey, I already 
already broke this one, but first you take the end and then like pull it down here and then it's a little string, then you pull it down. Sometimes it does that, but but then but you Aww, but, but, um, Mama what? <laughs> but then you like you split it open and then you pour all the beans out. And if it does that, just break that end off and um and then just do it then just do it again. Good job. And just do it again. <laughs> and they'll all cook up the same. You probably noticed the color difference. The ones without much pink in them, those were, they could have hung a couple more days. Um, but as you saw, the plants are starting to get eat up. So um, we're going to go ahead and just, when you cook them, you won't be able to tell the difference though. This one's been sitting out for a while. And it's also, it doesn't have a lot of beans. Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't. There's a baby one. Yeah, we'll just And leave. there's a little bitty one. Is that, is that, there's a little bitty one. Yeah, that's a bean that never did make anything. All right, y'all. I'm finally finally going to get these things canned. Y'all know that um, this is all just my real life, and at this time of year, my life is chaos. <laughs> so I know how to put it. It's a little chaotic this time of year. So it's actually taken me three days for my beans. Um, first evening, I picked them. You saw me shelling them. That was yesterday. Me and the kids got them shelled, and uh, today I'm finally going to can them. These beans ain't hurt a bit. You can actually can dry beans, so I wasn't worried about my beans. They ain't like cucumbers. They're not very, it's not like really, really pressing. Do it right now. Do it right now. You know, because it takes a while to shell these things, too. Um, so we're finally going to get to that part of the video, and uh, you can do this method with any kind of fresh beans. Whether it be pintos, whether it be October beans, whether it be crowder peas, um, same method for all kinds of beans. So I put my beans in um, pint jars because that seems to be enough for us and the kids at uh, a meal. So of course, if I'm cooking for more people, I'll just cook two pints worth, but I don't usually do beans in quarts. Now I'm gonna tell you something about beans. Anybody that's ever cooked fresh beans or dried beans even, um, you know beans drink a lot of water when you're cooking them. Well, they're going to be cooking in this pressure canner, okay? This is something I've had to learn over the years. Um, but as far as headspace with when you're canning beans, if you don't want a bunch of them sticking up out of the water in the jar, I put them about that full, okay? See, I'm not even all the way up to the rim. Now, I will put enough water in here to go all the way up to that first indention there. But my beans are only going to there, a little over half full. The reason being is they're going to expand. And when they expand, when you're canning them, it won't, I've never, knock on wood, uh, had my jar bust or nothing, but it pushes all the water out of them. Um, and they're still fine. If that does happen to you, that's fine. I mean, they're still, where they're pressure canned, they'll be all right if that does happen, but um, I want to teach you from my mistakes because I did that for years and I just slowly over the years just put a little less beans and a little less beans and a little less beans until it finally doesn't happen quite as bad. So I do, I put them a little over half full and um, my canner holds nine pints. So I'm gonna get all these beans put in these jars here. <laughs> a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna tell you one year I had some extra fat back. <clears throat> I'm not sure how approved this is but I'm not telling you to try it because I don't know if it's approved but I tried it. <laughs> and I had some extra fat back and I went through and put little pieces in all my beans. Now I'm gonna tell you what that was really good. That was real good. I don't have any extra out right now. I may do some with my crowder peas. 
and uh, it was. It really put that flavor in there. I didn't even really have to season them when I cooked them. They were great. All right, so I only had eight pints. I almost had nine. I ain't gonna fool with canning that one though because it ain't enough in there to fool with. Um, I'll put them in the refrigerator, maybe go out here and pick me a little another mess um, and just cook them for supper tonight. So one thing I did want to tell you, anybody that's been following me for a while, you know, last year I tried the reusable lids, the harvest guard lids, and I'm gonna tell you, I liked them. They served a purpose when I didn't have the metal lids. Um, but as far as the failure rate, it was much higher for me than the metal lids. And I practiced with them and practiced with them. I canned water and different things because it's definitely a learning curve. Um, but if I have a choice and I can get metal lids, that's what I'm gonna use, just my preference. Um, so just in case any of y'all are wondering that and looking like, Megan, you use a metal lids, what happened to them other lids? So that's, that's what's going on there. Um, so I'm glad that I have them. If the case ever were to come again, that we weren't able to get cannon lids, at least I do have those as a backup. Um, like I said, it's just a little higher failure rate, which was no big deal. The ones that didn't seal went in the fridge and were, was cooked within a few days. Um, I just wasn't able to put those up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get water in these. All right, so see there? Hope you can see that in the video. I filled it up to about that first ring right there. Okay, and that's the way I'm gonna do all of them. Again, I dry beans too, but these are nice. No soaking, no nothing. They're already cooked. I just gotta open the jar, season them a little bit, and we got us a nice side dish. And the reason I was telling y'all how long it took me to do these beans is I don't want you to get discouraged. If this is your first year or your 20th year doing vegetable gardening, you know that everything comes in at one time. Everything decides what it's gonna do all at the same time. And um, no matter how far apart you plant, somehow they always seem to catch up with each other. So these beans wasn't hurting sitting. And so I just don't stress myself out over it. I just do it as I can. Um, Things that can set longer than others, they get kind of put on the back burner a little bit like these beans. So um, I just don't want you, I want you to be encouraged about that and don't give up. Don't say, Lord, it's too much work, it's too much at one time. I've been up for three days trying to put all this garden stuff up. Don't do that to yourself. Now, hence, there are nights that I do have late nights, but that's mainly with the, the cucumbers and the pickles because they've got to be done the same day, okay? These right here are gonna go in the pressure canner for 50 minutes under 10 pounds of pressure. Get my rings on here and we'll get them going. For a few more minutes. Um, always remember to lift your lid away from you because things about to come out of this thing here. All right, go ahead and get these out. Ooh, they look beautiful. 
See how those beans filled up that jar? That's why I don't fill them up all the way. Well, hopefully here those go to popping in a little bit. I let them sit and cool for a full 24 hours, remove the rings, and they're ready to put up. All right, folks. There you have it. You can use this method with any kind of beans you want to can, um, any kind of fresh beans. And anyways, I, if you noticed, if you're a person that pays attention that I changed my shirt, I'm fixing to go find out whether I'm going to have a new niece or nephew. So I think it's going to be a nephew. So I got on my blue. We're fixing the head down there. So anyways, I'll talk to y'all next time.